Who's the toughest guy you ever played against? The guy that always gave me the most problems actually was Tracy McGrady. You know, he, he had all the skills and all the athleticism, but he was 6'9". Why was a young Tracy McGrady the only player a young Kobe Bryant was truly afraid of? Short answer, T-Mac was right on Kobe's heels and it appeared he was only going to get better. As if we look at Kobe Bryant versus Tracy McGrady between the ages of 21 and 24, we find that Orlando Magic T-Mac not only averaged more points and rebounds per game than Kobe, but that also, when it came to national recognition and awards, one thing was clear. The two were neck and neck. In this four-year span of their young lives, both individually earned two second team and two first team All-NBA appearances. They were undoubtedly the two best young guards in the NBA, they were both on the path to basketball immortality. However, while Kobe would go on to win the MVP five seasons later and win two NBA championships after that, Tracy McGrady would finish his career having never won a single playoff series as a contributing player. A massive drop off from a man who in 2003 was seen as a revolutionary talent, a basketball unicorn, the first six foot nine wing who could truly score from all three levels while also running the offense and rebounding. A young T-Mac was an athletic beast who had a not so rapid rise to stardom. I was the last dude invited to this camp. They gave me this jersey number 175. They had to fight to get me in this camp, right? First game is against Lamar and I hold my own. I go from unknown to the number one player in the country. So what happened? Why did Kobe Bryant continue to rise as an NBA superstar while Tracy McGrady's best years can be found in his early 20s? Well, what's up guys, Mike here and Tracy McGrady left the NBA as both a Hall of Famer and a man who again, never won a playoff series as even a role player. In the Spurs 2013 championship run, a 33-year-old T-Mac would average 5.2 minutes per game and zero points. When individual awards do not match up with team success, we all very much dislike it. Look at how much hate Russell Westbrook and James Harden have taken in recent years. However, in the case of Tracy McGrady, this is a complicated story and in the 38 playoff games that T-Mac competed in between the ages of 20 and 28, T-Mac averaged over 28 points, six rebounds, and six assists per game in an era where these stats were jaw-dropping. In comparison to the stats of 2024, we have to remember that the games were slower and scoring at a high level such as 28 points per game was extremely rare. And to show you exactly what I mean, if we take a look at the top 10 scoring leaders in the 2003 season, we find that T-Max 32.1 points per game was absurdly dominant. It was almost 10 more than Ray Allen's average and Ray Allen finished 10th in the league in scoring. Meanwhile, in 2024, Tracy would rank just third in the league in scoring and Ray Allen would be nowhere on this picture. But guys, before we continue, I am very excited to thank our friends at DraftKings for sponsoring today's video. Because as we know, the NFL playoffs are here and I've teamed up with DraftKings Sportsbook, an official partner of the NFL, to hook you guys up as throughout the playoffs, all new customers who bet $5 will get $200 in bonus bets. Instantly, instantly. If you've already signed up for DraftKings like me, you can get a no sweat bet. That means you get a bonus bet back if your same game parlay does not hit. Max reward limits apply. And if sports betting is not yet available in your state, do not worry. You can still join in in all the fun with DraftKings Daily Fantasy and have a chance to win cash prizes. So make sure to go download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. New customers, again, bet just $5 on any wager and get $200 in bonus bets instantly. That is personally what I'll say, just an incredible deal. That's promo code Corzemba only at DraftKings Sportsbook. Again, thank you to DraftKings for sponsoring today's video. And for now, let's get back into the video. There is a reason why Kobe Bryant spoke so highly of Tracy McGrady's prime, and it is that. T-Mac was not a top three pick who was guaranteed everything. Tracy went from averaging under 20 minutes per game as a rookie to a top five player in the league in year five. So you can see with this rapid rise to superstardom and with the fact that he had a few inches of height on Kobe, well, you could see why Kobe would be looking over his shoulder a bit. It is here though where I do believe that a difference in mindset changed everything. In our recent 
recent Shea Cotton video, we talked about the three strikes of bad luck for Shea Cotton that took Shea Cotton down. And for Tracy McGrady, it is the same, but I will say things are a bit more unclear. Were these three strikes of bad luck or were they three really bad decisions? You can certainly have your own opinion as we go along. And the first of these was his choice to go pro. Now, objectively, of course, becoming the number nine pick in the NBA draft for the Toronto Raptors and making it to the NBA should have been a good thing. Only, it was a nightmare. T-Mac would describe his first season in Toronto as hell, and he would also, in his Hall of Fame speech, feel the need to say this. First year, didn't go so well, but your best move, Zeke, was firing that coach my rookie year. <laughs> Boy, was he wrong. Boy, was he wrong. You heard that right. In his Hall of Fame speech, T-Mac felt the need to remind us all that his biggest hater was his rookie season coach. It is hard to imagine that Tracy McGrady got the best coaching he possibly could have during this time. But looking back at this ESPN interview with Tracy as a high school senior, it is very clear as to why Tracy made the decision he made. I might make like three million a year. Hopefully I probably have a shoe contract or if I'm not a lottery pick, maybe 900,000 a year with a shoe contract. <laughs> Financial security and shoe deals. That is what Tracy McGrady wanted at this time. And really, it's tough to blame him. Back in the late 1990s, AAU basketball was the Wild West. 50-year-old men were trying to strike it big on the backs of 16-year-old teenagers. The NBA would eventually implement the one and done rule due to the fact that so many high school seniors were given misinformation, went undrafted, and then never received any money. T-Mac was guaranteed to go top 10. He went number nine to Toronto. He got the money in the shoe deal, but it did end up costing him in his career. In his rookie season, Tracy was given just 18.4 minutes of playing time. In that same season, the school that Tracy would have gone to, Kentucky, had six other NBA players on their roster to practice with, and also just just so happened to win the national championship without T-Mac. On top of this, the number one pick for the 1998 draft, the draft after T-Mac's, was given double the salary of T-Mac. If T-Mac had stayed in school and bet on himself, he surely would have went top three. We know the talent he had. However, again, I don't really blame him. He went number nine in the draft. The problem is that this first bad decision slash bad stroke of luck directly led to what I will call mistake two. Mistake two was Tracy McGrady refusing to swallow his pride. As in 1998, Tracy McGrady's cousin, Vince Carter, was drafted by the Toronto Raptors, a move that should have made Tracy overjoyed. As before Vince Carter was on the Raptors, T-Mac and Vince were seemingly best friends. You're getting ready for the draft. You come up to Chapel Hill to play. Yeah. You were getting ready to go to a family reunion. Yeah, I remember my phone ringing, and on the other line, I hear, What up, bro? What's up, cousin? I was like, hold up, bro. We cousins? Before Tracy and Vince were on the same team, things were were simpler. As soon as Vince averaged over 25 points per game in the 2000 season while T-Mac only averaged 15, things suddenly became much more complicated. Apparently, as it was reported that after only three seasons in Toronto, Tracy was choosing to return home to Florida to the Orlando Magic. That's what the media reported. However, it was also reported that T-Mac wanted to be his own man. T-Mac would later admit that this was a mistake he regretted. It was a tough decision to leave. Now that I look back, it's all over. I wish I had to stay, man. Really? I, I swear. I, I swear I wish I had to stay. If we look at the NBA landscape at the time, it is no surprise at all that Tracy feels this way. Because without the Toronto Raptors on the one side, we had the incredible rise of Orlando T-Mac. In 2001, the very next season, Tracy would increase his scoring average by 11 points per game and was immediately named second team All-NBA. He would then be named first team All-NBA the next two years after that, making him, by every definition, a true super. Star. On the other side, in 2001, the Toronto Raptors, without T-Mac, the very next season would lose in seven games in the Eastern Conference semifinals to the Philadelphia 76ers, who were the eventual Eastern Conference champions. Without T-Mac, the Raptors still had a chance to win this series if Vince Carter had just made this shot. Carter trying to get free. Carter at the buzzer. No go. And the 
Sixers hold on. If Tracy was on this team, it's hard to think that they wouldn't have had a chance to reach the finals. As again, the Sixers team that beat the Raptors was indeed the same Sixers team that lost to the Kobe and Shaq Lakers in the NBA finals. But Tracy wanted to escape his cousin's shadow. Decision two, what I will call mistake two, as T-Mac left for the Magic, a team who specifically had another superstar joining him in Grant Hill. There may have been more to the family angle than has been said, as Tracy did not leave in free agency to become the only star on a team, he actually left to join an established veteran star that was more established than Vince. From the years 1996 to 2000, Grant Hill was named second or first team All-NBA every single season, and in 2001, he was going to be just 28 years old. He was supposed to be the veteran star entering the apex of his prime. Tracy McGrady was seen as the promising young star joining him. Here is where the bad luck of Decision 2 does come in, as in Orlando, immediately, Grant Hill would suffer from extreme ankle injuries that had him playing in only 47 games in four seasons with T-Mac. This was absolutely crippling to the Orlando Magic's NBA Finals chances or even playoff chances as a whole. As to put it very simply, Grant Hill had a max contract slot and so Orlando had no one else to replace him with. A current example of this would be the Denver Nuggets, as even Nikola Jokic could not win when Jamal Murray and Michael Porter Jr. went down with injuries and they had huge massive contracts that would have locked the Nuggets into a really bad future if Porter and Murray did not return. In the four seasons, Tracy tried to play with Grant Hill. Grant never came back and Tracy went off to Houston. It is in Houston where, to be fair, Tracy did gain some reputation of not being the hardest worker. His head coach, Jeff Van Gundy, would say, I like a lot of things about Tracy McGrady. I just wish I could have changed his practice habits and his mentality, which is not the best to hear. However, the third decision that would truly finish off T-Mac's career was not his own. As in Houston, both T-Mac and Yao could not remain healthy. I want to focus on the bad decision of one Doc Rivers, who may have made one of the worst decisions of all time. As back in 2000, when we had Tracy McGrady and Grant Hill joining the Orlando Magic, Tim Duncan was a free agent, and it was reported that he wanted to join the Orlando Magic as well. It was reported he was all set to sign on the dotted line, until he asked if his family was going to be able to use the team plane, along with the rest of the team, to fly to games. Doc Rivers told him no, it was players only on the plane and so tim duncan returned to san antonio instead of signing with orlando and in houston unfortunately it was tracy mcgrady who was never the same player that we saw in the orlando magic days but as we could see when Tracy McGrady was at his absolute best, T-Mac had a real argument of being the most talented player in the league. And as we've also seen, if things had just gone a bit differently, T-Mac's career could have gone in a completely different direction. So I want to know what you think below. Was this bad luck? Were these bad decisions? Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe and turn on post notifications. That way you never miss a video. If you're already subscribed, thank you so much for supporting. You're awesome. We all know it. And as always, Always have an awesome day and cue that music. If you're still here while the music is cued, here are two videos I think you are definitely going to enjoy. I mean, personally, I think the one on the left might be more your style, but the one on the right looks pretty awesome too. Click one, let me know what you think. And again, have an awesome day.